What's up guys? Welcome back to the second channel where we are doing another fast-paced electric bike review video. This one on the brand new Engway M20. But it came packaged very nicely. I'll try to put a picture of that in and I didn't find any damage at all. This bike is quite unique looking compared to anything I've had before. I guess we'll go over a few specs and then give you some build assembly tips and then go for a full range test. A quick glance at everything that came in the box. You got your wheel, front fender, which is aluminum and stainless steel bracket. This little case, uh, which can go up here on the frame for storing things. Owner's manuals, we'll go over those at the end of the video in case you want to view what's inside. Really beefy headlight, check that out. That looks like it's gonna be awesome at night. Front axle, the pedals, full kit. Two batteries, so this bike, you can get an optional second battery, which you can see it has a little pigtail on there, and we'll go over installing this. This has a little splitter for being able to basically run both batteries at once. Kind of cool. And charger, which is 2.2 uh, amps charging at 52.4, oh, I'm sorry, 54.6 volts. He got disc brakes on the front and rear, which are cable actuated. Really nice heavy duty telescoping front forks, telescoping, however you say it, like to say it. Uh, adjustable compression on them, right there. Nice twist dial action on there. You also have a rear shock, tail light, aluminum fender on the back too. I like this came with fenders. And it's got a seven speed Shimano. Nice derailleur guards already on there. It's good they ship it with it. Sometimes they don't, and then these get banged up in the box. They're advertising a top speed of 28 miles an hour and a max range of 34 miles on full electric on Power Assist 1, it says on the website. But then in the manual I saw, it says only 28 miles range. So we'll see. I always do full power. I wouldn't be doing Power Assist 1 because you're only going to be doing like 10 miles an hour usually. The standard battery it comes with is 13 amp hours, and they advertise a 5-hour charge time. See, it shows five bars when fully charged. I did already juice these up. And the spare batteries, also 13 amp hours, so you have a total of 26 amp hours. So that's gonna be really nice to have. The rated max capacity on this bike is 265 pounds, and it looks very heavy duty. But as far as height, I think they said six foot six. I'm six foot three. And I mean, it's looking like this seat is pretty close to the pedals. So definitely, I think if you're shorter, this bike would be great, but we'll find out when we get it all together. And it's got a twist throttle on it too. So let's slap her together now. There are your pedals on, as usual, lefty tighty on the left and righty tighty on the right. Let's make sure it's snug good down real good in case you get mixed up. It's got the sticker on there. Now I've removed the dummy axle from your front forks and install the front wheel using the provided axle that has two spacers. The smaller spacer goes on the rotor side and I wasn't able to use the supplied wrenches because this takes a 12 mil and 14 mil to snug it down. And once you do tighten it, just make sure your wheel spins nice and free too. And that your brake rotors fitted properly in between those brake pads. Pull your front fender up and they left the hardware in the bike, which is always nice. But check this out. They have a, a larger nut that I think they, they want you use that as a spacer in between so you don't crush this uh, guess I'm fine with that looks good now remove your bar clamp bring the bars up install those should look like that when you're done with even gaps on the top and bottom of the clamp make sure to not over tighten these pretty small bolts with four millimeter heads tighten in a cross pattern too for the headlight you see these two connectors go right to the harness here and here and then it's just got this clamp style, so finagle that into place. Should look something like that, but you have full adjustability in case you want to stagger them, go for a different look. On this bracket, you do want to be in the second notch, the tighter one. I found the first one was a little bit too loose. And when you turn your bar side to side, make sure the cables aren't binding up or anything. This does have uh, bar stops on it right here, so when you turn all the way, that hits the frame and keeps you from overextending and or or damaging the fork. Now let's drop our main battery in. Just line that up, click her down, turn the key, move, and it's locked in. And on the right side, turn your power switch on. This is the charger port, and then check this out. You even get a USB out on it for charging your phone. I'd like to see that they added that. The display has a sticker showing you what the buttons mean. So two seconds to turn it on. There you go, let that fire up. That's a very nice display, I like it. You got a horn. Mm. See, I'd prefer a bell. <laughs> I don't really like the horns because it's just it's kind of aggressive. Uh, but anyway, I want to try these lights out now. And so let's see. Uh, well, is that okay? So that's the tail light right there. 
Wow, that is bright. Whew, let's see if the brake lights work on it. Oh man, that is super bright. So they did a killer job on this tail light. A lot of time bikes either don't come with them or they're just super dim. And that I'm very impressed with. Let's see, now that just cycles the tail light on and off. I think to uh, turn the headlight, it said, for some reason my headlights are not coming on. I even tried swapping these wires over, but all you do is long press this for two seconds. You see it dims the screen, turns the headlights on, but they are not turning on. So I will have to look into to that. Let's go ahead and put the second battery on now. Uh, if you didn't have that, you could just put this case on. It's a nice little storage. Just some Velcro straps. You just turn the key and then slide this base plate off. Secure this to the frame using the three supplied stainless steel screws. I'm gonna put Loctite on these too. I don't like that it has different keys than the other battery. It's kind of annoying to have two sets of keys, but it is what it is. I position my bracket so it's all the way forward and then you can slide your battery into place. We can now go ahead and install the equalizer to connect the two batteries in parallel. Uh, but I'm noticing actually th these batteries are different sizes. This one's considerably larger. However, I did check they are both 13 amp hours. I removed the four nuts on the bottom of the seat and then that gives you access to the control box area and so check it out plenty of space to run that wire in and uh, just make sure your batteries are off when you're plugging these in pretty self-explanatory connecting connecting this all together you know you can't really mess that up there we go should look like that you see this has a fuse on it too that's heat shrinked over in case you have a short circuit and i did reconnect the only wire that wasn't connected in here so i'm assuming that is why the headlights weren't working here so look at the, the horn in here I tighten that all together and now let's uh, you know, see if my i'm gonna turn both batteries on turn this on let's see if the headlight works it should work now i would assume two seconds there we are. Twice, uh, just the bottom one's on. So it turns out I have to push this light button, which turns on the tail light too, and then they both come on, very bright. However, I even when I turn the light off on here, that doesn't change anything up front. Those stay on no matter what, if the bike's on. So uh, I guess that's not a big deal. And with the seat bolted back up, there's a look at the completed bike. That is awesome looking. Uh, definitely small, like I was saying. I mean, I'm going to look probably a little goofy on this, but I think it'll work fine. I will say in your toolkit, you definitely want to bring a socket with you because you see these long studs on the seat. If uh, in the event that you have one of those wires that come off under there, you got to get this off. Uh, that's going to be annoying. So really like a quick release would be nice on that seat. And I've been trying to figure out this light. I, I still don't understand. I mean, whenever I, I touch the power button, it it turns these on see if i even just just press that so i i'm not sure i'd like to be able to get it to the point where i can be blackout and still riding around you know so uh, when you turn these on this just dims the screen it doesn't do anything else but anyway not gonna run on about that next step is gonna be going for a ride however it is dark and cold out tonight so that'll probably be tomorrow all right guys next day ready for the range test it is windy and cold out so bear with me if there's a lot of wind noise or not well let's see how i look on this thing i'm a six foot two 180 pounds there it is let's uh i'm gonna try out these gears so as you can see pedaling this regular bike with no power not really efficient because you can't bring the seat up. Uh, so I'm going to fill these tires up to their max pressure now and we'll get going. Pumped them up to 20 PSI. Just ran it through all seven gears. Those shift good. No adjustments needed. The brakes feel good as well. All right, so we're just about five miles in. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm indicating 21 miles an hour and on the GPS 20. So that's pretty accurate. But uh, that's max speed with the headwind. When the, when the headwind goes away, you get about 25 is the highest I've seen it under full power, no acceleration from your feet. And there it is, five mile mark. Let's see what we are at on Map My Run. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this showing five miles on our trip. Three bars left on the battery. I did reset that when we left. And 4.69 miles indicated on GPS. So that's out of 10 miles, we would lose 0.6. So 94% accurate, uh, pretty typical. Of course, I've only got the bottom battery switched on, keeping this top one for reserve. I did try flicking this on when we were riding and you notice a little bit of power increase. I got about a mile an hour. So I was doing like 25 and then it got it up to 26. And 
if you were down to three bars riding under full throttle, it'll actually bring your bars up too. So that's, uh, all that's working well. I think it's a much better idea to just keep the top one as a reserve though. So let's see how far we make it on the bottom. These gusts of wind are not helping with our range. Every time one hits me, if you ever, ever rode a bike in the wind, it really lugs you down, which is what it's doing to this too. But here goes full acceleration. Uh, so no pedaling, speed five I've been on the entire time. That's, that's full throttle. And I'll show you how long it takes to get up to speed. There's 10 mile an hour. Oh, you know, it's not a rocket ship. Uh, of course, I've been pedaling off the start on this uh, just, just to try to help the battery a little bit, but otherwise not pedaling. There's 21 miles an hour and getting some gusts. Yeah, so with, once you get the wind in your face, it's pretty much holding at 21 miles an hour on here and not going any higher. And with the wind died down, we're holding a solid 23 now, so not bad. bridge is awesome when I was a kid there was no walkway on this uh, this is crossing from Pennsylvania into New Jersey on 295 actually used to be I-95 now it's 295 but uh, they put this sweet walkway in it goes over the river I mean look at that beautiful Speaking of the Scottish Falls, let's go check them out. Here's me complaining about the cold this guy's kayaking. <laughs> You know what you never do when you're doing dumb things like this? Like, I don't have great balance, but you don't look at the camera, whatever you do. <laughs> That'll trip you up. Of course, you left the important stuff on land, especially with the wind gusts kicking over right into the water. Uh, and you can float right through this, no problem, without flotation. Just keep your feet up. We used to do it all the time when we were younger. Oh, look at that plastic barrel. That's a good one, too. If I had my truck here, I would definitely take this home. And onward we continue. I gotta say, the canal path is much nicer over here in New Jersey. A lot smoother. They did a good job grading this. We're now down to one bar, starting to lose a little bit of power. 14.2 miles we're showing. Uh, one thing, I, I think I was already saying it, but the seating posture, you know, even if you want to pedal assist on this, if you're six foot two, it's, you can do it, but it's relatively uncomfortable. Uh, the gearing's not bad though. You can hold 20 mile an hour using full power as the battery gets lower and give it a little bit of pedal assist. I just wish the seat was like a foot higher. I don't know. Of course, that's just a test because we're doing full electric on this ride. You know, that one bar, I don't know. She's still running really strong at that. So we'll see. I think that's it. Just cut out. Will we make it to this bench? Uh, yes. There we go. Four mile an hour in memory of David Dooley. 16.8 total miles, which is not surprising. I mean, look at the wind on the water, or if I let go of this, it's we had a headwind basically the entire time. Uh, so the cool thing is, all I got to do is switch off the bottom battery and switch on the, the top battery turn my display back on and look at that 
five bars. So to reset the trip, all you do is hold the power and minus button. And now we're back at zero. And something else I didn't show you is if you're wanting to walk up a steep hill or steps, you can hold this minus button, negative, whatever you want to call it, and it'll go into walking mode. So you can walk right next to it up uh, some steep steps. Or, I mean, that really helps out because if you try to throttle it up steps, it's liable to want to spin the tire. So now I think I'll take a quick break on David's bench, and then we'll head back, see if we get a much better range out of this secondary battery with the wind not in our face. And now time to set off back home. Did want to show you the power assist settings real quick. You have zero through five. So on zero, you just pedal it like a normal bike. Even the throttle doesn't work. Uh, if you go to number one, let's see if the throttle does full speed when it's on number one. Some, some bikes do and some don't. You know, so it maxes you out at 14 mile an hour. And same difference if you just rotate the pedals, you don't actually have to be pushing on them hard. I will say though, when you stop rotating, there's about a second delay from when it stops kicking the power in. And as I always say in videos, that can get you in trouble in tight quarters. When you are using the throttle here, there's no delay at all. When you let go, it shuts off. If you hit either of the brakes, that shuts the motor off immediately as well. Power assist two brings you up to 17 mile an hour. Power assist three, 20 miles an hour. Power assist four, 24 miles an hour. And power assist five, 27 mile an hour we were able to hit without the wind in our face. thing ever came to this area. It's a shame there used to be a guy that had a house right down there though. He was the only one that had amazing privacy. Yeah. Well hopefully they gave him a good value for it. Passing the old Whipple Deck Trust Bridge. I'm actually surprised they haven't replaced this yet. This is from uh, like 1800s. Rolled back into my town. We're at 14.6 miles, showing one bar, but still holding a solid 23 as we're cruising. So I'm gonna, you know, detour and just just uh, keep keep on going until it runs down. And there it is. Just rolled over to 17 miles. So we already beat our range from before, um, showing one bar. But let's start heading on back. Well, here goes some hill climbing. This is probably 30 degree slope. There's no way it's gonna make it up, but boom, let's give it a go. Woo, give us some pedal action and, oh, it almost made it up that with speed. I know the, the camera doesn't show how steep this is, but hold that minus button and then it's gonna go into a nice firm walk for you without spinning the tires. You can push the bars and easily walk it up steep hills. Now, of course, with the tires up at 20 PSI, you know, it's a little rough on this, this bumpy stuff, but if you drop them down, it'll be smooth as can be. See, like, this is really steep, but I'm standing up and pedaling, and I can actually motor up this oh, within reason. I don't know what the heck they're going to do with this, but they just keep dumping dirt, and it's really awesome. I mean, the guys built a mountain. When we were kids, this was a riding spot we called the ups and downs. And those railroad tracks, it was lower than those. There was actually a hill climb up to those tracks. So they've completely filled that in. Here's a tower I was climbing the other day. It's kind of like my, my secret chill spot. I guess it's not a secret anymore. But you know. and the only taller mountain around here is the, the landfill out in the background. There's a few of them out there. We've got a couple miles to go until our final destination. Going to meet up with Jen for some dinner. Well, let's see if she makes it. The bike, that is. Handles going down this steep stuff like a dream with this dual suspension. And I think that's it. 19.6 miles. We have just about made it. Just got to pedal this last bit around the bend and we're there. 
There she is. Hey. Sorry I'm late. I ran out of juice just a little bit there. How'd it go? Oh, awesome. This thing's great. Just gonna leave her chained up to Jen's wheel. Looks good. You guys never been here? Cafe Antonio's? Great spot. Oh, it's dark out now, huh? So we put this in your trunk. That is one of the benefits of this smaller bike. Didn't have to take any parts off. Was able to jam it right into Jen's trunk and drive on home. We're back in the garage, ready to give some final thoughts on this bike. Uh, I got the battery off on charge. I'll let you know right here how long it takes. Would be nice if we had a second charger or even a splitter off to be able to charge both at one time, but not a big deal. Uh, I did hear back from them about the headlights, and so whenever you're riding this bike, it's normal. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but these lower LED strips, uh, when it's on, those stay on. And if you hold the positive, it... I guess that was an older way to turn the lights on. That doesn't do anything except dim the, dim the screen as I was showing you earlier. Uh, so let me, let's try out these lights at nighttime now. Here's the daytime running lights and the headlights. So out of every e-bike I've had, those are superior to anything I've seen before, along with the tail light too. I mean, that is just ultra bright on there. I don't know how well the camera is gonna show you, but top notch. As mentioned before, it would be nice to go blackout and have no lights at all, but that's as simple as adding a new switch up here if you wanna do that in the future. Uh, so I did switch this over to miles an hour and it stays there once you, you switch it in the P menu. To get to the P menu, I think I showed you earlier, you hold the, both those buttons and then it's real easy to cycle through where what adjustments you wanna do. Uh, I will put pictures of the manual at the end though in case you wanna change any of the parameters. And so overall, I'm definitely impressed with this bike. I would say my biggest complaints are gonna be the fact that you can't bring the seat up at all. And for being six foot two, I just didn't find find it very uh, functional for me. You know, I mean, I like, when I do these tests, I do full electric just so we have a baseline on the bike. But when I normally ride one of these bikes, I like to pedal real hard and, and get a good workout. And I just didn't find I was able to do that on this bike doing 20 miles an hour. So if you're looking for something that's more of a mini motorcycle, but still the ability to pedal, then this is definitely the ticket uh the range totally satisfactory you know they advertised 28 to 34 were the numbers i was reading but that was at power assist one so you'd only be doing you know 14 miles an hour i think it was once you get up to holding 24 mile an hour and you have headwinds it just drains those batteries down totally normal on these another big complaint i mentioned was the horn it sounds loud in the garage but when you're going down the trail at speed i feel like nobody could hear it at all and I mean, what if you have no battery, right? You have the bike off. I don't know. I just, I think a manual bell is, is the way to go. It's just a lot more friendly. All that being said, the Engwe M20 gets a thumbs up. It's a cool little moto mini motorcycle e-bike. Definitely a cool piece to have. So hopefully the video helps you decide if this is something that would work for you or not. I'll drop a link to it down below in case you want to check out the pricing and such. If you happen to have any questions about the bike, drop them down below. I'll try to answer them. And just, again, thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you in another video very soon. No nonsense, no how. Over out. like usual at the end let's flip through this manual in case you want to pause and read any of this or in case I lose the manual All right so hopefully this will do a good enough job sorry about the glare I don't know if you guys can read that. This camera.
Summer's not doing a great job. At least that's what it looks like. Hopefully you can find what you're looking for, right? Charging tips. Warranty info. And then it's just a battery manual. I don't think uh, it goes over some specs on them and stuff. Oh, they do have a 48 volt 15 amp hour battery too. Hmm. How about that? I wonder if that larger battery on the bike is just labeled wrong. Because it's definitely considerably bigger. Not too much in here that you guys really need. Alright. Cool. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully it helped.